All right, so welcome to our uh, workshop on our markdown. I'm going to be sharing uh, my screen. Okay, so you should be able to uh, see my art studio now. Let me know if I should zoom in a little bit more, or if that's okay as it is. I think you should zoom in a little bit more. A little bit more? Okay. Mm -hmm. How about now? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. Uh, so if you have a look at the GitHub repository, I'm working in this Markdown overview, or I'm going through this Markdown overview document in case you want to follow along, but you can also just focus on what I'm, I'm doing here. All right. Um, so yeah, what is Markdown? Uh, so Markdown or R Markdown is part of the Tidyverse family of packages that you probably have installed already. If you've been to any of our uh, workshops so far, we, we basically almost always use these. Um, and then you can also install the Knitter package um, that has a, lo a lot of useful um, additional options as well. And you technically don't, yeah, don't need to load it straight away, um, but just so you have these packages um, installed. All right, so what is our Markdown? Why is it useful? So in an, in an R Markdown um, document, you have a combination of um, R code, output from that code. So something like a plot or a table or a model output or whatever else you could get from running code. And then also text. So just text like I have here. So this is also an R Markdown um, file. And we tend to teach from these because we think it's really convenient. Um, and then you can take this file and um, export it to HTML. Um, which has the most features. We'll mostly be working with HTML um, output files today, but you can also export them as Word and PDF um, files. And why is this useful? Or why, is, why is this a cool um, thing that you should definitely use? So if you, um, yeah, so if you uh, work in a word processor like Microsoft Word or something like that, or an alternative, um, you often need to do a lot of formatting by hand. You need to add tables by hand and files by hand. And yeah, the formatting often gets messed up. How do you add code that's formatted properly in Word? That's not really possible. So um, Markdown takes care of all of that um, for you because the formatting is just consistently handled for you. Um, and you can show code, you can show code output and, and all of that. And this also makes your research more reproducible. So if you if you collected data um, and then you want to uh, add some more, so you've collected some more data, you want to rerun the analysis. If you report your results in a Word document, you then have to go back and do every step kind of manually. You have to replace all the graphs by hand with the updated data. Um, but if you do it in Markdown, you can just run the Markdown again with the new data. All right. And so the, the default output for Markdown is a document, um, but there are also many other formats. Uh, we'll have a quick look today at journal articles. Uh, which includes how, how do you add references and a bibliography in our Markdown um, and slides. We'll have a quick look at uh, slides as well, but there's much more. You can, there's book down, which lets you make books in Markdown. And there are learner tutorials, which are these interactive tutorials um, that are also written in Markdown. You can make websites in Markdown so that there's lots more options. And to just have a quick example of what that looks like, uh, or how do you even, how do you get started with this? You can go to file, new file, and then our markdown, or you can do the same thing here. So top left, and then choose our markdown. And you can see you have some options on the left, document presentation, shiny and from template. So we'll mostly stick with um, document today. Uh, then you can enter a title straight away, or you can do that later, and then you can uh, pick the output format. So we'll stick with HTML for now, which is also the recommended format. It just has the most um, features. So I'll just click uh, OK. And it starts me out with already a couple of, a little bit of text and some examples in there. And I can actually um, knit it straight away to, just so we can see what that looks like. All right, so you see we have something that looks like um, code in here. We have some text, we have a link, we have some aster asterisks. Um, so we have some things in here uh, and also a title and the date and the author's name. And 
let's just knit it and see what happens. And knitting is basically exporting it to the chosen output format. So here we have HTML and we can click on knit. And now I need to save it before I knit it. So I'm just going to um, put that just on a desktop quickly. All right, so I can just enter a name and now it's knitting and now it's already done. And it's opening a um, preview for me, right? So this is the HTML format. We can also open it in the browser, but this preview will do for now. So you can see this has converted um, the code and it's showing us the output and you have the code in these boxes and you have this plot that we've, that we have um, shown, right? Okay, and the link is kind of embedded. You could, you could click it and it would lead you to that site. So that's what it looks like. Um, and there's a bunch of things that you can, you can do here. Uh, so something that's very cool about Markdown and that's also a reason why we use it for teaching is that the working directory of your Markdown is um, wherever you save it to. So here in the beginning, we have something that's separated by these three hyphens. Um, and this is the, the YAML. And in the YAML, we have information such as what's the title of the file, who wrote it. So this is all has been added by default. Um, what's the date and what's the output going to be? All right. And then we start with the actual document. All right. So that's always the first section. It's always at the top. Um, and something you can do here is change the date. So you can change it to whatever you like. You can type in whatever you want, um, right? So, and that will show up in the, in the output. But a really cool trick is to set, I'm just gonna copy paste it so I don't make any typos, to use this, which will update it to whatever the date is that, well, yeah, today's date, right? So we can actually run that. Uh, just in the R console. And you can see here at the bottom what it prints out is 21st April 2022. So if I exported that tomorrow, it would say 22nd, right? So it would change depending on when you run this. Um, and this will come up later as well. So this is basically saying, here's some R code that is following. Here's some inline code. And we'll talk about that um, a bit more later. Um, all right, so that's a nice trick. You can also play around with what happens if you do, um, for example, instead of a capital B for month, uh, we'll do a small case. And then instead of April spelled out, we have it kind of abbreviated, or you can also do capital letter D and that will give you the date in this kind of format. So there are a couple of different um, formats that you could uh, use here for the date. Uh, all right. Yeah, then something that we can also change straight away and that's going to make um, a big difference are themes. So in the HTML document, we have a bunch of options for themes. So these control the, the font, what kind of a font do you have, um, colors and other properties of the text. And here's a whole list of them. And here's a website where you can have a look if you like. Um, and then the second option would be highlight. And highlight is actually what the code chunks look like. So what the code looks like. And there's also a whole list um, of uh, options. So just to, to demonstrate, I'm just going to pick one. And what we need to do here is add a line break after, oh yeah, we need to add a colon um, and then a line break. And you can see that it gets indented. So I've added um, a line break after output and a colon after HTML output. Um, HTML document because I'm now adding more options that have to do with this HTML output. So I'm adding theme and I know that I think the Lumen one was a nice one. And then I'm adding a highlight and it's just going to be TextMate. And so I'm just going to work in this file um, just to show you a couple of things in an actual file. And then I'll also put that on, um, on GitHub later on. All right, and, and I'm knitting that again to export it just to, to show you what has changed, right? And you can see that the, um, the text looks different. The font looks a bit different. Um, maybe I should pick a 
different formatting oh no a different highlight or maybe we'll see that better later maybe espresso that sounds nice but basically this highlight argument will change what this um what these code chunks oh yeah now you can see it better so this has changed what the code um looks like in the code chunk so this has made summary orange for example we'll see we'll add some code and you'll probably see it a bit better later on all right so those are kind of styling options appearance and style then we also have a bunch of text options that you've seen me use here and that are also already in this um demo kind of um, so one that you might be familiar with are headers. So you use these um, hashtags, one hashtag for the first level, then two for the second level, three for the, for the third level, for these subheadings, right? You can keep going for as long as you want. And, and these will just show up in the font sizes, right? The first level headline will always be the biggest and then it'll decrease. Then you can have um, asterisks. So one set of asterisks um, for uh, italics and then double for um, bold. So this will make the text that is within the asterisks um, italics or bold. Um, then you can also make lists. Uh, so for these, you also can use asterisks or you can use hyphens. That seems to work just as well. Um, or you can use numbers followed by a full stop. And I'll show examples in a second. And, and you can also indent them. So to get to the next level, you can use two tabs or four spaces and plus to kind of get to the next um, level. So let's, let me show you a couple of these things. And I'm just going to delete everything that's in here. We're going to start from scratch. Um, and I'm go going to be using the um, penguin um, data that you've probably seen before, but it's a nice, nice data set. Uh, for an example. And let's say I want to analyze that data a little bit. I want to do some um, visualizations. I want to look, I want to have some descriptive statistics. So maybe my first headline is going to be prep. So just kind of preparing the data. Um, then I can do choosing the data. That's going to be my uh, subheading. Uh, so I need to justify why I want to use the penguins data. Um, and so maybe I want to write um, as everyone always says, penguins are very cute. So let's work with penguin data. All right, so that's a very convincing, I think, justification of why we should use um, the penguin data. Uh, and then my next subheading could be something like um, loading packages, reading data. All right. And I haven't actually shown you how to add code or add a code block. So all code needs to be in a code block. And that just happens by clicking on this um, drop down menu. And here I can pick R code. All right. So I can load the Tidyverse. And then I'm just going to copy paste the. Uh, here okay so penguins gonna read that okay and that's gonna be read in so when i knit that uh r is just going to execute everything that's in here all right uh okay what else would i maybe like to do with this so maybe i want to make a little um to-do list for myself so maybe i want to say first i need to and then I'll say, okay, I need to load packages. I need to read in the data. And I need to uh, remove missing values. Okay. And maybe to emphasize a couple of things, I could use asterisks. So here I put packages that will appear in um, italics. And then maybe missing or the step about removing missing values. Maybe that's really important to me. I want to have that show up in bold. Okay, let's knit that, see what it looks like. So you can see it, it goes through everything down here. It gives you a little bit of a progress report. All right. And here you can see it kind of worked. <laughs> we have italics. Uh, we have bold, we have our headings, our subheadings, we have our 
first little bits of code, not super exciting yet. Um, but the line breaks didn't work. We didn't have line, we had line breaks in here, right? But we didn't actually have line breaks um, in the output. Uh, so something that you'll often need to do is if you want line breaks, you need to add two spaces at the end of the line. That should hopefully fix it. Um, I'm also going to add an empty line here to make sure that the list is properly showing up. Okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now I have the correct line breaks that I wanted. I have my list a little bit indented. I have all the formatting that I wanted. So that's nice. Um, and then I can maybe continue by saying, or by already, already thinking about what do I need to do or what else um, could I add to this document? Uh, so I, okay, I have the data. Maybe I want to do some uh, descriptive statistics or so something like cal calculating averages. Yeah. That'll be good. And then I want to do graphs and that'll be a new heading. So I'm just kind of structuring this document at the, um, at the moment. Um, what else could I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there at the moment. Maybe we'll have a little look at the data just so everyone's familiar with it. Oh, and here you see, I need to read it in. <laughs> so just because I knitted it, that doesn't mean that it's actually in my workspace. So this penguins data, we have a bunch of measurements, bill length, bill depth, flipper length um, from these three um, penguin species. We also have their um, weight, we have their sex and what year the data was calculated. So I could collect um, some ideas for graphs for later on. I could make a list here. I could say, okay, maybe um, weight by flipper length would be good. And then I could also do, so here I'm just making a list with the asterisks, um, flipper and bill length, see if there's a kind of a correlation there. Um, that's probably okay for now. And then I could also think about, um, well, I could do that for the entire data. And here's so I'm using plus to indent, so to add this new sub level for my list, uh, we could do it separately for each species and we could also do it um, by uh, the penguin sex as well to see if there are different tendencies. Okay, and I'm gonna knit that and see if it shows up properly or if I did anything wrong there. <laughs> All right. Okay, that looks nice. So you can see how that looks. I can put it next to uh, what the code looks like maybe. So this is what the list looks like in the Markdown document. And here's what it then looks like uh, when I export it to HTML. All right, so you can see we have these um, bullet points and then we have the next level of bullet points and that's what it needs to look like uh, in the Markdown. Julia, um, can mm -hmm. I point out a tiny typo? So oh, when you read in yes. the data, you have the um, variable name twice. Oops. Doesn't oh yeah. <laughs> to be causing an error, but <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Interesting that that doesn't cause an error. I guess we're just creating the same thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Back to the overview to see what else uh, we can do here. So we've done lists. We've done a bunch of kind of formatting. Uh, we can have links. And we can just add the links as they are. But if you, in a document, if you want to have some other text or something like click here, and then you click there and it, it, get, it takes you to the Markdown website, then this is the format that we need to use. So put it into uh, square brackets. So the text that you want to see in the document, put that into square brackets and put the text um, of the actual link into round brackets right next to it. Um, all right, so here maybe we want to attribute the source of the data uh, in our actual little penguin um, <laughs> document. And I can write something like more info is available um, on, and this is 
Alison Horst's um, GitHub that I'm gonna link to. And so that's what I wanted to read. And then the link is here. Okay. Yeah, the line break is, I think, just because the link is too long. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we can have a look at that to see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, and you can see it reads Alison Horst's GitHub, but if I click on it, it'll take me to that link that I provided. So that's how you can add links. Um, all right, then yeah, something that's kind of nice um, is a little block quote. Uh, that's just a bigger than sign with a with a line break. Um, so this uh, quote that I have here, we could make that a, a block quote. And I'm gonna knit to show you what that looks like. I'm knitting a lot <laughs> here, by the way. Usually when you write such a um, markdown file, you wouldn't knit um, after every step, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So this is what a block quote looks like. It's just kind of bigger and it has this little light gray bar on the side to kind of draw attention to it. So this could be kind of a central uh, quote or something. Okay, then line breaks and empty lines. So line breaks, I already um, think I mentioned that you have to add these two spaces at the end of the line. Otherwise, um, when you export, when you um, save to HTML, uh, this will be ignored, right? It will just continue in the same line. And if you want to add an empty line, you, you use this. So you use um, the BR tag, basically, right? So if you do, if you do something like that, that won't actually translate into new empty lines in HTML, but you have to use this. All right, so I'm just going to maybe add some lines here. Okay, and I'm gonna stop knitting after every single step because <laughs> it will take too long, I think. Okay, yeah, then we've also seen we have these code chunks and code needs to be um, within these chunks and we've already used some to or one actually to read in our um, or to load our packages package to read in the data and to show what that data looks like okay and you can have different options so when you load the tidyverse you have a bunch of messages popping up telling you what's been loaded uh, maybe you don't really want to see all of that so there are there are different options um, how the output should show up or if it should show up and how the code should show up and if it should show up in the knitted document in the html uh, so you can and you would write that in here so in this um, little r in um, curly brackets you would write for example echo equals false if you want the output to be visible, so your graph or your um, code output, you want that to be visible in the HTML, but the code shouldn't be visible. Um, you can do include false, which hides both output and code. Uh, you can do warning false um, to uh, suppress warning messages that might come up. And if you do eval false, then the code won't be run. Right? So that might be helpful if you have kind of dummy code to show how something works in theory, but it's not actual code. And if you try to run it, you'll get an error message. And you can combine these. So you can have code that um, is supposed to not be run and also not show, which doesn't really make sense. But you can combine all these options as you like. Um, and you can also have these as global options. So you can either do it for each code chunk separately or you can kind of set a default um, option and that would usually be the beginning um, of your document where you would have something like this with um, options chunk set. And then here in the brackets, I can say something like eval false, which would mean that for the entire document, the code is not run in the entire document, right? As we um, export it. Um, so for our first um, code chunk here, we could do something like uh, warning false. Oops, I need to spell it properly. Um, message false. Right, so these can either just be true or false. And that way I won't get all these messages from um, when I load the tidyverse, but I still, I'll still see when I run head penguins, I'll still see that 
in the next document. Um, all right. Yeah, then so we can have code in uh, chunks. So in these code chunks, but we can also have it in the text. And that's also really useful, um, especially when we have something like descriptive um, statistics that we want to um, quote in the text or that we want to include in the text or maybe also model output uh, that we can mention in the text. So let's say, okay, I wanted to remove missing values. I haven't done that yet. So I can pipe into a drop NA and I'm just going to run that again just so I have it correctly in the environment. Um, and then I want to report how many rows I have. So the command for that is n row. Okay, so 333. So at the moment, this is in a uh, code chunk, but let's say I want to write in the text how many uh, rows the data has. So here to, to document what I've been doing, I can uh, say I removed missing values. So the data now has, and then I can write this. So here I've had, I have a back tick and then R and a space. And that means that what follows within these back ticks will be read as R code, right? So when we knit it, it should show up as 333, or oh, I should write rows after it so that it's clear what I'm doing. So this is going to be evaluated as we knit and the result is actually show, is gonna show up. Okay, let's see, let's hope that worked. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you can see here, it says I removed missing values. So the data now has 333 rows. And that's what it looks like in the document. And we can keep going with this. So if we want to do some descriptive statistics, uh, we want to report some, maybe some averages, some standard deviations or something, we can say the average um, bill, um, or let's do the length is, and then we need R code again. So we have, oops, backtick R space, and then we can put code in there. So we can do mean penguins, uh, what did I just spill? Uh, oops, oh God, bill length, <laughs> millimeter. All right, so the average bill length is, and then it'll calculate that and put it in the document for us. Um, I could also do something like, and here I'm gonna add a new line just to show that as well. Uh, this data was collected between, so now I want to have the minimum for year. So the first year that it, it was collected or that we have data from, and then the maximum um, as well. So between year and year. So between, again, we need R code, um, min, penguins, year, and then again, R code, max, penguins, uh, year. Oh, I'm yeah, looks... closing bracket. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What are you about to say? <laughs> thank, yeah, you. Exactly. thank you. <laughs> that would have been an issue. Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to um, the brackets automatically being closed for me, which is not the case here. <laughs> okay, yeah, it so looks like it worked. So now we have this output of the average bill length, uh, 43 point something millimeters and the data being collected between uh, 07 and 09. Okay, so that's inline code. And that's also There's actually- a question. Yeah, Oops, but that's sorry. also actually what we've been using for this um, date to put in today's date. Mm -hmm. The question. Yeah, there's also a question if you can include like multi-line code with pipes in the inline quotes or in the inline code, or if it only works for a short command. Uh, we can try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't actually tried that, so that's a good um, question. So, penguins. Ooh, I'm a little worried that it won't like that. I guess I could but do it in the one line. line. I don't really need. Yeah. Um, Uh, 
and then mm, yeah I'm just trying this we'll just see if it works I think this should work let me know if you spot any uh yeah, you need another closing bracket. Oh, I was closing brackets. Oh, yeah, yeah thank you. So you still have to like autocomplete. I really am, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if this shows up and doesn't complain. <laughs> so I guess you can't have line breaks, but if you can squeeze, um, oh, yeah. If you can squeeze everything in one line, I guess it works. <laughs> but you can always, you know, if it's something that is really long, but you want it to show up in the text, you can define it. Um, as a variable, right? You can define it as a variable, do some stuff here, and then uh, refer to the variable with inline code. So that will that should work anyway. Okay. Yeah, so inline code. Um, and then another nice thing is code folding. So this kind of determines if these code blocks are shown in the beginning. Um, or not, and it also lets the user click uh, on on the on a yeah on a button to see the code block or to hide the code block, and to actually show that I'm I want to add a few more um, actual code blocks because we only have one. It's not going to be very interesting. So here I'm going to um, yeah do a few graphs, and I'm going to uh, just copy paste them because I this is not really about the graphs. Um, I just want you to uh, see the code blocks. And these are just taken from the, um, yeah, these are just taken from the uh, documentation or for, for the, from the vignette of this package. Okay. So you're getting a sneak peek at the entire uh, demo that I want to uh, do with you. <laughs> All right, just gonna copy paste that. Uh, forget that you saw that. All right, and now we have uh, we should have three graphs showing up. Uh, I'll show I'll just show them in the knitted um, yeah show them in the knit document. But what I want to add here is so let's first um, in the YAML so in this section up here under HTML document we can do uh, code. Oops, I need to spell it correctly. Code underscore folding. And then I can say true or false again. Um, oh no, sorry, I have to say hide. That should work. All right, so let me show you what that does. So here I'm saying hide all the code blocks in the HTML. And you'll see what that does in a second. All right, so you can see my text is still there, but all the code is gone. Well, this one isn't because I'm of an option I'll show you later. But here we just have graphs. We don't see the code. We just have the graphs. But we do have buttons now. So here we have one um, at the top. If we click on that, we can choose show all code or hide all code. And then here where we've read in the data, we also have a button. And if I click on that, it shows me the code. And then I can click on hide and it hides it again. Okay, and now what's happening with this where well, we do have some code by default. If I go to that, I have an additional option here where it says class source equals fold show. Right? So that's in these curly brackets and that's an option just for this code block that overrides the default. So by default, everything's hidden. All the code blocks are hidden. They are still being executed, but they are hidden and you have to click um, in order to see them, except for this one because of this option, right? So this just overrides the default and actually shows it instead of um, hiding it by default, right? And you can, again, click the button to hide it, right? So you can set these defaults in the YAML, um, code folding hide or show, that's the default. And then in the curly brackets in a code block, we can do fold hide or fold show to overwrite the default just for that code block. You can see this is the file I'm working, the HTML demo. And I have a picture here that I would like to include 
in my um, file. Right, so just a quick, um, nice little illustration of these penguin species that I would like to put into my file. And I would like to put it just underneath the script of statistics because this is kind of empty. Um, okay, and there are two options here. We can use a code block and include graphics. And this is from Nitter. So you need to have Nitter loaded, otherwise it won't work. Um, and then I can just type in my file name if this is saved in the same place, which for me it is same place as my R markdown file. Um, if it's in a subfolder, I can always type in the subfolder name with a slash and then the file name and then uh, R knows to go into the subfolder and look for that picture um, there. So that's include graphics, that's one option. Um, and then in the code chunk, you can use something like uh, figure width or height um, and that'll be inches or you can do um, out with, oops, out, I think dot, yeah. Um, and out height, and that will be in percentages, right? So percentages, and that means it'll kind of adjust as you adjust the, the um, size of the document. I'll show it in a second in the, in the demo. So that's one option, include graphics and a code chunk. And the other option would be to do this. So to have an exclamation mark, and then to have square brackets, and this will be kind of a description of what you're seeing here. Um, and then the file name in uh, round brackets. And then here I also have a, a width argument. So what, what should be the, the width of that um, file? So I'm just going to copy paste that over just so we have a little bit of an illustration. Also want to add a new line here. Uh, yep. Yeah, let's have a quick look. We, we also still have a couple questions about oh, sorry, co yeah. code folding, uh -huh. but I'll let you load this. I'll let mm -hmm. you finish up this part first. Okay, and here we have our little picture. Okay. And again, this um, alternative of include graphics that works really similarly. Uh, yeah, the questions. <laughs> Yeah, um, so the first one is for the hiding the code, the setting in the YAML, does that only work if you're, if you have an HTML output? Yeah, that's one thing that only works if you have HTML. Um, otherwise, in, in Word or PDF, you don't really have the interactivity of, of allowing a user to click on hide or show code. Yeah, that's why that only works in HTML. Mm -hmm. And there's also the question about, um, What's the difference between code folding equals hide and echo equals false in the code blocks? Yeah, yeah, let's have another look at um, that. So echo equals false, um, that just shows the output, but it doesn't show the code and you have no way of looking at the code, right? The user, if you send that file to someone, um, they will see the output, your graph or whatever else your output is, um, but they don't have an option to click on something to see the code, right? So that's kind of the difference um, between the two. So it's this is not interactive and um, code folding is interactive for the person that you send it to. Good so far? <laughs> okay, uh, nice, yeah. So then we have um, table of contents, which is also super useful. Mm, and this is something that you do in the YAML I'm just going to demonstrate it, I think. So this is also an, um, an something that needs to go under HTML document. It can also go, yeah, it can go here. And so I can say TOC, table of contents, is true. I want that to show up. And then I also have a couple of um, additional options. So right now, our headlines are not numbered. Um, we can either do that by hand, but we can also do it really easily by saying, number sections is true, set that to true. Um, there's an argument that we don't really need, but in case you ever need it, the depth of the table of contents. So if you have subheadings that go, that have four, five, six hashtags that go to really kind of 
yeah, into lots of detail, um, you could set that to four or five or six or however many um, subheadings you want to be shown, right? So if I had something like uh, another heading and then yet another heading and so on and so forth. If I wanted them all to be shown, I would set that to four. I think the default is something like three. Um, so if you want the sub, 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 sub headings all to be shown, you have to work with this um, argument. Um, mm -hmm. We'll show that first. There are a couple more things, but I want to show that first. Okay. Yeah, and now you can see we have a table of contents here. And you can also see that it numbered things for me, right? Because I said number sections. And because the depth is four, it even shows this sub sub subheading here. And I can click on these and it'll take me to them. Okay. All right, so you can see that the table of contents is at the top here by default, but we can also change that. So we can do table of content float is true. That should put it to the left instead of at the top. So that's just a design choice that can look kind of nice. All right, so you see it's now at the, um, on the left, on the left side and we can click on it. But you see that it doesn't open everything else up unless we've clicked on it, right? So we can also change that. So this is kind of a sub option um, for these table of content um, float. So that's why it's indented another level and it's just collapsed false. So that just means have it be open by default instead of having it closed first and you having to click on it. All right, so now it's open by default. And you can kind of click on it and go through it. Okay. Yeah, cool. I think that's all I wanted to say for the table of contents. So that's all in the YAML. Are there questions about that? Okay. Um, yeah, so we've been working with HTML um, a lot so far, and I'm just going to quickly touch on um, other output formats that we have. Um, so just kind of describe how they work. I and mean, then that's in my experience, fairly seamless. I'm not gonna demonstrate that. Um, but if you want to use the PDF output, you do need to install tiny text and run this command. Um, and this installs LaTeX, um, which is just a prerequisite that you need for knitting to PDF. And then you can just change output PDF document or when you make a new document, you select um, output PDF. And yeah, some options won't work. So this flow, so anything that's kind of interactive with this code hiding or the floating table of contents um, won't work, but a normal table of contents will work. Um, and then similar for Word, you shouldn't really need any additional R packages, but you do obviously need an installation of Word or another yeah, open office, whatever you have. One of these alternatives works as well. And then you just set um, output to Word document in the YAML, right? Output PDF document or output Word document in the YAML. Okay. Yeah, then something that's really cool that I've discovered kind of recently is that you can have um, references and you can even write entire journal articles um, in our markdown. So this um, means that you can refer to a source that you cite and have our markdown automatically make um, a reference list at the end of your file. Um, and for that, it's, it's really kind of necessary, I think, or easiest probably if you use some kind of a software like Zotero. Um, so a reference management software that collects all the articles, all the books um, and whatever else that you want to refer to. And then these um, programs have an option to let you export the citations you'll need. So um, 
if you write an article, you'll, you'll say, okay, I need all these, I don't know, 50 sources, please export that to a file um, that ends with bib, so a bib text file. And I have an example here um, that just has two sources. So we're just going to open it. Um, I'm opening it in um, VS Code. That's just a text processor, so just any text processor. Um, and we have two sources in here. We have one article. You can see, so the type is article. Um, that's actually the original source of this penguin data, was this article. And then the second one is a reference to the um, Palmer Penguins package. You can also get this penguins data from the Palmer Penguins um, package. So two references, and you can see the format here. Oops, don't do that. You can see the format here. It says at article. So this is the, the type of the source. This is an article. This is software. So this is um, kind of mixed. And then you have a curly bracket. And then you have what you'll actually need to remember for our markdown. So this is kind of the short title for the source. And that's what you'll have to remember to put it into our markdown. So if I want to refer to that um, article, I'll have to write Gorman.2014. And if I want to refer to the package, I have to remember that I have to write horse.2020. And I have to add um, this add um, symbol, right? to be able to refer to something in the text. And then I also need to tell um, R where to find this file, this BIP file that I have open here. So this file needs to be linked to Markdown. And in we just do that in the YAML, we do bibliography and link citations. And that just lets you um, jump from, click on the citation, it'll jump you to the references. So um, to demonstrate all of that, so that will go uh, just here. That also works for um, PDF and Word, by the way. So that's really useful. Okay, so bibliography, and then I need to actually type in the real name, which is Penguins Bib. Okay. All right. Yeah, and now I need to refer to um, some articles just in, as an example. So where we talk about, yeah, this probably makes sense. Where we talk about the penguin data, I can say um, this data is also available in the Palmer Penguins package. Oops, package. And then I want to add a reference to the package. So I need add. Um, because I want to have it in brackets, I'm going to add square brackets and then I need to type in host.20. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, so I can check it here. This is what I need to type in. Okay. Um, and was originally introduced in, and now I want to refer to this article. So I need to type in. Gorman.2014, or actually um, at, oops, dot .2014. Okay, so the difference is just this will add brackets around it and this won't. And then because I know that I'll get an automatic references section, at the end, so this will automatically be added at the end of the document. I'm just making a heading um, so that it'll it'll have a nice heading because it doesn't do that by default. Um, okay, I'm gonna actually comment that out because I don't want to do that right now. And then I'm going to knit and see if it works and if it looks right. Okay, yeah, I'll try and put it side by side with the code ish yeah and um, yeah so here we have the references so it's host at all 2020 and here we have the second reference which is gorman and others 2014. All right so this has been replaced with the full um reference and i can click on it and it'll take me ooh, to the references so it has inserted the full reference to this article and to this package um, at the end of the document. So that's really useful. Um, but what you'll notice is that this is a specific um, reference um, style, right? So this is um, the Chicago format. Um, 
And you can actually customize this by adding kind of a style sheet um, that you can download here. So this is a website where you can go and write, yeah, type in whatever reference uh, style you use. I like APA. So I actually downloaded the CSL, uh, CSL file and I can specify that at the start of, oh yeah, in the YAML once again. Uh, so that's going to be uh, just CSL. Then I just need to say what the CSL file is called. And when I export it now, it should have changed the reference style. So you can really customize this. There are lots of different reference styles um, available that you can download and really customize that. So you see with APA, you don't have people's full first names, you only have the initials. So you can immediately see that that has changed the reference format. All right, questions about this? Okay. Cool. Yeah, so this is really useful. And then there's even, so here I'm not gonna go through it, but you can also have page numbers. You just format it slightly differently and you can have several references in the same brackets. Um, and there are even these journal templates. So there's an articles package. Famously, every R package needs to have an R pun. So the articles package has templates. Um, so if you install that, and here's also some more information, but if you install that, and if you make a new um, markdown, you can say from template. And I don't have it installed on this computer. <laughs> I forgot to do that. But you'll have templates for different journals, basically. So different academic journals will have different um, yeah, suggestions on how, what kind of font, font size, if you need, um, yeah, what kind of formatting you need in your article and what kind of referencing you need. And this has a lot of templates um, that you can use. All right. And then one more thing that's that I wanted to show, and I'll show that pretty quickly, are uh, slides um, that you can make with R Markdown. And here I'm going to for reasons of time, <laughs> skip straight to the demonstration. So this should also be in the repository, it is. So this is the slides demonstration. And there are different packages out there, people have their favorites. I decided to have a look at Reveal um, JS, package Reveal JS. So you need to install that if you want to use that. And if you want to, yeah, um, knit that presentation, I was just curious about it and it had quite nice um, themes. So you can see my output here is a reveal JS presentation. Then I have a couple of options. So these two will be familiar. So you have themes um, and highlights. So theme again is for font, um, yeah, font size, those kind of kinds of things. And highlights is for code formatting. Um, then you have incremental true. So that means that when I have bullet points, I need to click to see the first bullet point, second bullet point, third bullet point, and so on. Um, centering for centering the text and um, there are different transitions so from slide to slide and then I can also link my bibliography and here I've just this is kind of very similar so this is also kind of penguin um, data and so on and I'm just going to knit that so you can see what it looks like and this will also give you um, an html file I think yeah yeah so that's what that looks like. <laughs> and then you can click here. So at the bottom right, or you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard um, to move to our first heading. So preparation. And you can see if I click right again, I'm moving on to graphs. So you can move between the first level headings with these um, right and left arrows. And if you actually want to go into the subheadings of preparation, you have to click down or press down. And you can see my, my block quote that works. Um, I have my link, I have my references. So this all works. And here I have a little trick um, that this uh, will only show up when I click and I've done that by using a fragment. So that's what that looks like. So this part will only show up after I've clicked. Okay, then I can move on. So here I also have this list of needing to load packages, read in data. Yeah, so you can see we have the code showing up here. This is all the same, yeah, or very similar to what we've seen so far. 
And here I have a list. So let me scroll down and show you what that looks like. Um, yeah, some ideas for graphs. So we have a list. This is the same or similar to what we've done. And I need to actually keep clicking to see this list. And I can do that because I've set incremental to true. Yeah, and here we have, again, we have some uh, code, we have the graph. This is just a very simple graph, just as an example. And we have the references as before. So that's one example for making slides. There's, there's other options as well. There's lots of options. Um, this was just something I was kind of um, curious about. And there's a lot more um, information on this real JS um, package uh, here. And there's a really good detailed book um, that has lots more info on our Markdown that is available here. Yeah, that's what I had prepared. Are there any more questions? <laughs> Um, no, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Thanks for this uh, introduction <laughs> to Markdown. Um, this is really cool, really helpful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>